in terms of um, nods to the original film, I think we're trying to uh, invite new fans, old fans, people that are familiar, know the original film inside and out, and then those that don't, and are, we're asking them to kind of take this experience, uh, this, uh, this pilgrimage with us for the very first time. Once we had an idea, we had the seed of an idea of what we wanted to do with this film, I got on the phone with Ellen and I kind of pitched her the idea. She was, as she should be, very suspect. What are you guys doing? What are your intentions? Uh, how are we going to do this? How is the story going to be told? And, and getting to know her, reading her autobiography, and in, in a lot of ways discovering what happened in her actual life after The Exorcist film came out, started finding parallels in the journey of the character of Chris McNeil that we wanted to create. What would Chris's life have been like 50 years after the events in Georgetown with Reagan? And so I think our curiosity and our collaboration there really started to spark something in both of us and our co-writer Peter Sattler and just tried to sculpt something that was meaningful, that was respectful to the integrity of the original film and followed her character on this very valuable journey for us. Part of the story that we're constructing in The Exorcist Believer is that Chris wasn't in the room when Reagan was possessed. She wasn't there for the exorcism. She didn't witness it. So this is a part uh, of her life where she's invited back into the uh, chaotic spiritual scenario. And what is the first thing she wants to do is, is step into the room. Are you looking for Reagan? Are you looking for Reagan? She burns in hell! Ah! Reagan, no! It was amazing having Linda as a consultant. She was very helpful in trying to navigate the psychology of our young talent. Lydia and Olivia were amazing young actresses to work with, and we're asking them to go to very dangerous, very provocative, very spiritual places. And so wanted to do that as safely, from a psychological standpoint, as safely as we could. And so uh, having Linda be there to kind of help navigate and give us advice, alongside teachers and parents and, and child psychologists and some of those, um, the fact that, that Linda had blazed this trail before was really, um, really valuable to all of us in trying to set a really healthy path to go to a pretty bizarre place. What do you think evil is? I'll tell you what I think it is. We're born in this world with hope and dreams and a desire to be happy. In a lot of ways, this movie is about community. And um, when I look around to, um, you know, to my community where I live, and, and sometimes you just don't know your neighbors and you're not connected. You're feeling like people are fractured by so many philosophies, religions, politics, these things that are kind of, that, that separate you rather than bring you together. And so this movie is that exploration. It's, a, it's not a big city, it's not a small town, it's kind of in the middle, and people don't necessarily know each other in the way that they should. And so a movie, uh, our movie explores how an event, an uncertainty, um, brings people together with their own philosophies and their own viewpoints. And that's, that's what we're here to study, is, is how different ideas, different personalities come together to deal um, with a circumstance that's extremely uncertain. Dad? Something's going on with my daughter. No! No! It's happening to my daughter, too. The devil has one wish. Wherever those girls went, they brought something back with them. <laughs> to make us lose faith. I believe you can help get our daughters back. To kill it in us. And the devil never gives up. In our research, when we started writing this film, Pete and I started exploring what could make this movie unique in the world of so many uh, exorcism-based films, so many movies that are rip-offs or copycats or evolve from the original Friedkin movie. And so I was really intrigued by the idea, and this happens occasionally, of, of synchronized possessions. The idea not only is one demon inhabiting multiple physical bodies, in our story, the family the viewpoints, the ideas that the loved ones around this child might differ. And so for, for our narrative, seeking initially seeking those conflicts beyond just the frustrations of possession, we also have parents trying to figure out how 
this works when they might have a disagreement about you know what this actually is what is causing this uh, where does the clinical meet the spiritual the m medical and the psychological all these things kind of come into play as we bring more and more voices more and more viewpoints into our story she knows who i am where's the other girl <laughs> So we're in the hospital, we're um, shooting the scene with Lydia who plays Angela in the film, and the expressions that she has, the subtlety of movements, body language, all these things just really were striking. It was her idea of like, what if I start under the bed and then all of a sudden I'm there? So we have an idea for a nice little subtle jump scare, but she really transforms that into the, uh, the acrobatics of a character in a way that uh, was very unexpected and r really uh, exciting once you put the edit together and you see how it works. Uh, you know, she's a filmmaker. She's bursting with ideas and so many uh, ways that she can interpret this character. And we were there just to roll film, capture the moment, and and try to um, try to channel some of that energy. What you're doing here is dangerous. People have died on both sides of possession. Come home, baby. Come back to us, okay? <laughs> if you don't make it, I don't make it. Mama! What is it, baby? I can't, I can't do you. Baby, I'm right here. I don't want to go to hell! God, play that trick on you. <laughs> I keep the photographs of our original makeup tests. Christopher Nelson, our makeup artist, who I've worked with on all the Halloween movies, and, and really taking inspiration from Dick Smith and the incredible uh, groundbreaking work he did on the original Exorcist. Taking that, wanting this movie to feel practical, wanting it to feel tangible, relatable, and really grounded in that way. At the same time, you know, we're dealing with infection, inflammation, all these horrendous physical attributes that are coming from this possession. And so Christopher and his team just bringing that to life, exploring what's too much, and then the different phases of where we're going to start tracking into the next phase of the possession look. So that was really fun. And then the idea of two and a half hours of makeup for these young performers to endure, um, if you didn't have that spirit, that energy, that sense of character, and that sense of understanding of what we're, uh, what we're going through to create this, it would have been a nightmare. But Lydia and Olivia were amazing up for the challenge and really delivered. There are two heartbeats. Is it working? They're beating in sync. Be strong. Ah! What did you do? One girl lives, one girl dies. You get to choose. I will say that this movie is about choices. It's about, uh, it's about life-changing choices, choices that you make when you're confronted with these um, sometimes internal, sometimes external choices you have to make. And so this is a movie that tracks those choices from the very opening of the film to climax of our movie is about choices that you're going to have to make. Or at least that they're going to, you're going to be challenged with these choices and see, do I have to make it? Do I have to give an answer? Do I have to take a side? Can I step back and um, let others, let other entities take over? So that's, that's part of our um, house of horrors, if you will, is when sometimes you have an instant understanding, you have an instant certainty of how you would um, choose, and other times it's a lot more complicated than that. One of the things that we do bring back is Michael, uh, Michael Oldfield's theme, Tubular Bells, from the original film, so being able to take that very iconic theme that triggers something really primal in, in me and, and I think to a lot of audiences and being able to deconstruct that and create something unique out of something that's so familiar. Um, so it's been amazing to have that inspiration and to carry us through this film.